this is an introduction to Windows Movie Maker 2.6. We'll actually be going over 2.6 today because Windows Live Movie Maker, which is what's showing on the screen right now, I was just kind of playing with it and it just isn't as intuitive as Windows Movie Maker 2.6. So if you have Windows 7 or Windows XP and you already have Windows Live Movie Maker installed on your PC, that's no big deal. It's Windows Movie Maker 2.6. It's actually a free download online and I'll be including that link um, below this tutorial today. First things first, let's show you the different areas of our screen that we have. On the far left hand side we have our task area. This is the kind of the quick easy place that you can go to import video, pictures, audio, uh, show the different effects and actually finish out the movie when you are ready to actually do that. The other options is if you click on this collections button, you'll see the different folders where your files are actually kind of organized. So right now my tutorial video collection is is um, selected. That's all of these different clips that I've imported in previously. You'll see if I click on this XD logo file that now I have another file or folder that actually has some of my um, XD tutorial um, videos and, and music files here. So this is actually the place where you can grab a file or a picture or a sound and move it down to your storyboard or your timeline. So this here area, it's basically showing you the progression of your movie. You can click on the time, it'll actually give you a little pop-up of where your cursor is currently at for the time. And there's all sorts of different options that you can kind of play around with in this timeline view. There's also a storyboard view, so it's actually our different clips that we've brought in and we can put in transitions in between them. And the last thing is our preview pane. So at any time you can always hit the play button and it's actually going to show you what is currently playing in the order that you're in here. Our very first step in creating a video is to actually import our video clips into our collections folder and there's two ways to do that. The first way is by clicking and dragging a video file into the collections area. So I've just grabbed this um, video tutorial type thing um, from my desktop and I'm going to move it over into the collections area. It's going to create a new folder and it's going to name it the same thing as what the video file is named. Now you'll see that by doing this I only get one clip. So this clip duration is three minutes and five seconds here. I can easily split this out in a couple different ways and I'll show you how to split a video but the easiest way and you're kind of at the mercy of the system um, if you do it this way is to actually right click and then create click on create clips. What that's going to do is it's going to separate the video out in what it thinks is the most logical way to do it. So it's looking for like pauses or uh, where the screen causing kind of pauses a little bit and it's going to split the video at those different pauses. So you now see that I have multiple different clips um, all generating from that one video file. And it's looking like they're all about 46 seconds long or so. Okay. The other way to import a file is to go to File, Import into Collections. This is going to open up a browser window so you can point and go anywhere. Um, I'm just going to grab this wedding beginning and hit Import. You'll also see that before I hit Import that we have this option Create Clips for Video Files. So I can click that and it's going to create those clips for me automatically. I can uncheck it and it would bring it all in as just one big video. And then you just hit import and it's going to take a while to actually import this file because it's, it's pretty big. I'm just going to hit cancel and you'll, you'll see kind of the beginning of, of what it's going to be doing. But you'll notice that in my collections file I get this wedding beginning and then I have a couple clips that I started to import here. 
Now a little bit about managing these collections because over the course of making one video you're going to be getting uh, you know importing a lot of different videos so it's very easy to you know delete and, and move these and, and things like that so to delete you just right click on it hit delete you can also hit your delete key same thing with the entire folders I don't have to go through and delete every single one of these files if I want to delete the entire folder I can just simply right click delete and now that folder is erased for me. Um, to move these around you simply just click and drag now it's going to be in a different collections folder and with all these collections it doesn't matter if it's a regular texture or a sound or a, a, a song or anything like that it's the same exact process you just file import and select those different files most of our work is actually going to happen in the timeline area here. Just to explain some of the buttons, the first one is your audio levels. This is where you can increase or decrease the volume of any voiceovers that, you can, that you're doing. This narrate timeline is a tool that allows you to actually talk over the video. It's going to save whatever you say down into this audio music area here. The zoom in allows you to zoom in and see a smaller scale so you can actually see different sections of a second type of a thing. If you do a zoom out, your scales is going to become larger. Rewind just allows you to go all the way back to the very beginning. Play allows you to play so as it's moving across or playing here, you're going to see it up in your preview screen. And then the last button, obviously, is your show storyboard. The next thing that I'd like to show you is actually how to start building your video. It's a very easy method. It's just a click and drag method. So I can click here and then drop it down into my storyboard. The storyboard is going to be just an overarching, you know, screenshots of each video clip. Where the show timeline is the more detailed second by second. Um, and we'll be going over how to do a couple different effects in here as well. But in this storyboard, it, it's really nice because the, we have little spots here that will actually allow us to transition between videos. So I can click on my video transitions, and let's say I want a checkerboard. I can drag the checkerboard right there. And now, if you look at my preview screen here, when I click play, you'll see the checkerboard effect come into play. So and just to show you that again just kind of checkerboards and then transitions into this second clip here now it's very common for one of your clips to be too long or maybe there's dead space in it um, and you basically want to trim it like this first clip is about oh 15 seconds here and really if we watch it there's not a whole lot that happens at the beginning so I kind of want to shorten that up so there's a couple different ways that I can do that I can either, you know, pause it right here, see how my blue slider's there, it's going to write at that 10 seconds. I can click this button here, which is the split the clip. And then I can delete, all I'm doing is hitting the delete key while clicking on this first clip area. And that's going to delete that from my slide. The other option that you can do is if you move your mouse to just the very edge of a clip, you can click and drag and that will also trim the video. And you can do that on either side of the video to shorten that up. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to delete this so I get a little bit bigger so you can see this here and I'm going to drag it down in between. The other nice thing is, is if we click on this clip right here, I can actually slide it over and move it over, see how my blue line, so now it's going to actually be all the way at the bottom, at the back here. So we can also transition or make this clip actually fade in um, over the top of this clip here, this tutorial 03. So if I click on tutorial video number one and I slightly move it over, you're going to see this blue box kind of transition like such and then they kind of overlap so now if you watch the tutorial I hit play see how this one kind of fades out and the next clip is gonna fade in over the top of it just like such so that's a good nice way to transition from one clip to the next clip to undo that you just click and move until that box 
become straight again, and now you have two separate clips. And instead of fading out, it just automatically switches right over. The other thing we can do is add a song to our video. So I've already imported this Made In With The Flax and Hair. I can drag it all the way down to the audio music. And here's my sound clip. It works just like the videos where I can grab the end of it and I can move it all, you know, clip it just like that. Now if I wanted to add, say, another music clip, I can grab another music clip, set it right after it. This gap here means that there isn't going to be any sort of music between when this ends and when this starts, so let's nudge this all the way over. It works just like the video where if I grab it again, it's going to fade in, just like with my video when I did that. See the previous clip slowly softens and the next click slowly increases. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to actually add a title or text over your video. It's very simple to do. Um, we go to Tools, Titles and Credits. We're going to get a bunch of different options here. So title at the beginning, I'll just show you what that does. This is my title. I hit Done. It's actually going to add a title at the very beginning. It's very, very simple. Okay. I'm going to delete that. The other titles and credits, title before the selected clip, title on the selected clip. This is title on the selected clip. It's actually going to put text. Put this text right over the video. I can hit done. So now when I play it, see how it comes right on top of the video here. Okay. Now to edit that text, there is going to be a couple different options. You right click on the text, edit title, change the title animation so I can say, you know, fade, it's going to give you a little preview of, of what that is, title in, etc, etc. You also can do two lines, so if I hit done and added something, down here. This is my second text. So the second text comes in here now. You can also change the text font and color. So we have tons of different fonts that we can choose from. The transparency of that font. So how light is it? How much of the video is going to be popping through to it? If it's left or centered, as well as size, make it bigger, smaller. And then the last thing is color and choose, say, green. So now when I play my video, I've got to hit done here. Now when I hit play my video, it's going to come up right on top of the selected video. The last thing I'm going to be showing you is how to save this video. There's two different ways to save. The first way is saving a project. What this does is it saves your work so that you can close it for the day and come back to it another day and continue finishing the project. The second way is to actually save it as a movie. So um, and that's something that when you save it as a movie, that's what you're going to be putting on your CD or DVD or posting out to YouTube. So to save a project, it's as simple as going to File, Save Project, you know, select the folder you want to save it, and you know, hit OK. To actually create a movie, what you'll need to do is save movie file. It's going to give you a couple options, you know, my computer or DVR, DV camera. You know, you can just select my computer, select where you actually want to save it, what the file name is, and you can either choose this best quality for computer playback or you can actually select your size. If you're doing a YouTube video, you might want to select this so you can still import it in. And you just keep on hitting Next, and it'll start saving your movie. It does take a while, um, so go get a cup of coffee while you're, you're waiting for the 90 minutes to expire. So that's a full tutorial how to use Windows Movie Maker. Hopefully it helps you out and you're able to understand it. Um, it is a really nice, simple, and easy tool to use, um, but it does have, you know, some limitations. You're not going to get a 
super professional uh, video out of it, but it's normally good for tutorials and home videos and things like that. So, hope you enjoyed. Have a wonderful day.